yes guys we are all set over to you priya the virtual stage is yours sure hello everyone in this session as uh, shubha mentioned we will be going through the transformer architecture and its applications so transformers are nowadays rapidly becoming the tool of choice in nlp with some pre trained models like uh, bird and uh, gpt gpt is uh, the latest model gpt3 which is grabbing some headlines now, right now and uh, gpt3 can generate new text based on the training data provided and it is said to be powering over 300 applications which uh, includes uh, domains like searching or conversations and text completion and many more so although we have i mean giving multiple examples of transformers into nlp domain there are uh, the transformer architecture is such that it can be used in the computer vision domain as well there are many applications in the uh, machine vision too and in the same way gpt3 generates new text the machine vision counterpart would uh, aim to generate uh, new images based on the uh, input provided and based on the way we have trained the data now there are other applications as well yeah there are other applications also one of them mentioned is uh, uh, the uh, predicting the protein structure the this was published by alpha ford in 2021 which demonstrated the first computational method that can regularly predict protein structures with atomic accuracy even in those cases where there was no similar structure known so this is the power of transformer architecture and uh, the one of the one of the latest uh, applications is uh, video audio text transformer that is also used to in um, uh, that combines multiple medias like uh, images videos and text so this was uh, about the usage and the applications of uh, transformer architecture and uh, we can uh, go deep into what this uh, transformer architecture is but uh, before uh, going uh, deep diving into the different components of the architecture let us first understand why do we need transformer like what was the need for uh, building coming up with this architecture when we already had other neural network uh, models in place like rnn cnn and all so in the next few minutes i will walk you through the different um, neural network architectures that we have rnn cnn their uh, drawbacks and why do we why we move to transformer architecture so the main reason for uh, or the main purpose the transformer architecture started was the use case of neural machine translation now when we are dealing with translating sentences a model needs to figure out Uh, those dependencies between the words and the sentences like uh, one sentence may be dependent on the other uh, on the previous sentence so the model should be able to capture all these dependencies and it should be able to uh, train the model efficiently uh, here is a diagram of a uh, recurrent neural network recurrent neural network or rnn now uh, it has loops in them which allows the information to persist so if you unroll the rnn it will look something like what we have on the right side in the figure uh, in this figure we see part of the neural network a which processes some input uh, xt and uh, uh, gives the output ht a loop allows information to be passed from one step to the next step now uh, this can be thought of as a multiple copies of the same network each network which passes the message to its successor and consider what happens if we unroll the loop will be something like what we see on the right side now this chain like nature shows that rnn are clearly related to sequences and lists so uh, it processes the words that we have in a sentence uh, step by step and it tries to capture whatever information is present from the previous word it can pass it to the current word now here uh, in this uh, below uh, video uh, this shows a simple uh, process what happens when we do uh, encoder decoder uh, sequence to sequence modeling using an encoder and a decoder so as we see in the encoder part it uh, uh, generates the results and the hidden state that gets generated is passed to the entire decoder state but the problem with uh, this uh, this architecture is that it does not have this long term dependency like if we take the example which is shown here the clouds in the 
sky. So because this is a small sentence, the model may be able to understand that the next word would be sky, uh, considering the uh, context it derived from the word clouds. But if we uh, take the second sentence, like I grew up in India, I speak fluent dash. So in this case, the model needs to understand that uh, uh, when we try to predict the word here, it should be somewhat, we are talking about language, but to further narrow down the like which language we want to focus, the model should be able to pick up that context from the country, India. So this uh, long-term dependency that we see here in such sentences, the RNN model may not be able to capture this uh, dependency. Uh, in this case, the, the difference between the relevant information and the place that is needed is very small in the first example. So the RNN can capture these, this past information and figure out what was the next one. But in the second sentence, like I mentioned, uh, because the distance between the uh, word that is needed and the previous information is more, the model may not be able to capture that dependency. So in such cases, RNNs become very ineffective when the gap between the relevant information and the point where it is needed becomes very large. And this is due to the fact that the information is passed at each step and longer the chain is, the more probability that the information is lost along the chain. So to overcome this uh, limitation of RNN, we use a modified version of RNN or a different version called LSTM, long short term memory. While uh, uh, so uh, you can think of LSTM as, uh, let's say you are planning your day and uh, you, uh, you have multiple meetings in your calendar. And some of these meetings are, some of those meetings would be more important. So you would try to uh, cancel some other less important meetings and more focus more on those more important meetings. So uh, LSTM is doing something similar. When uh, uh, it adds new information, it transforms existing information and uh, uh, it considers um, important or relevant information from the previous uh, sentences or words. Now, uh, the information flows through a mechanism known as cell state in LSTM. In this way, LSTM can selectively remember or forget what, it, what are the important and the non-important things. Internally, uh, this diagram shows how the LSTM network looks like, and each cell takes, it takes as input the uh, XT, which is the current word, and the previous cell state, and the output of the previous state. This you can see from the two arrows coming from block A to the current block, which is pointing by XT. And it manipulates these inputs, and based on them, it generates a new cell state and an output. Now, I won't go in much detail on the mechanics of each of these cells, but uh, there are literatures available where we can go through the internal working of LSTM. Now, with a cell state, the information in a sentence that is important for translating a word may be passed to one word to another when translating. Now, there is another one problem with LSTM as well. The same problem that we saw in case of RNNs may also occur in case of LSTMs. That is when the sentences are too long, LSTMs still don't do very well. The reason that is that the probability of keeping the context from a word that is far away from the current word being processed decreases uh, in a way exponentially with the distance from it. So when the sentences are long, the model often forgets the content of distant positions. And now another problem with RNNs and LSTM is that it's hard to parallelize the word for processing sentences. Both these models process the words in the sentence uh, uh, sequentially. Like it will first process one word, then use its information, and then process the second word. So when we have very huge uh, uh, paragraphs or huge data, the training time would be too much. And uh, not only that, but there is no model for a long and short range dependencies. So uh, summarizing the LSTM and RNNs present problems of the sequential computation, which restricts the parallelization in processing, then uh, it does not exhibit uh, long and short range dependencies. And also the distance problem, that if the distance between the current word and the uh, con context word is more, then it may not be able to uh, capture the relevant dependency between these words. Now, 
to solve this uh, limitation or to overcome this limitation, uh, we introduce attention. Attention is a mechanism that helps us to capture these uh, uh, dependencies uh, to overcome the uh, problem of dependencies that we face in LSTM and RNA. So here, let me play this. So in this, uh, uh, this small video, you would see that uh, at every step of the encoder, we, we, we have this hidden state and uh, in the uh, as of, as compared to the previous encoder decoder model where we pass only one hidden state uh, is being passed to the decoder in attention in the RNN model with attention mechanism we pass all the hidden states which are generated from all the inputs from to the encoder so in this way the decoder stage has in, has information about the current word and the hidden state information for all the words of the encoder so in this way the model should be able to understand or should be able to get some context of the previous words or the distant words it is like uh, in attention we can say like when we are translating a word or when we are translating any sentence we would uh, majorly focus on the word that we are presently translating we would not focus on all the words and if we are uh, uh, doing some transcribing for an audio recording then we would mainly focus on the uh, words that are being spoken right now and uh, we will only write those words we won't be concerned about more previous words or later words so that is what is done in attention neural networks can achieve this behavior using this attention mechanism we are focusing only on a subset of the information that is given Now, um, uh, here, once again, let me play this. Now, for attention to be brought into RNN in uh, sequence translation, we divide the attention, uh, encoding and decoding, into two main steps. One step is we first prepare the input and um, Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am. It so, is visible. Okay, sure. Uh, okay, the, the encoder passes a lot more data to the decoder, not just uh, uh, the last hidden state. It passes the hidden state of all the words. Now, instead of passing the last hidden state, the encoder passes all the hidden states. Now, second, the attention decoder does an extra step before producing its output in order to focus on the parts of the input that are relevant to this decoding step. The decoder does the steps which I mentioned here. First, it looks at the set of the encoder hidden state it receives. Each encoder hidden state is most associated with a certain word in the input. Then it generates a score for each of these hidden states. Now we will also, uh, I'll cover in much detail how the score gets calculated and how it's used at a later stage. But for now we can just uh, think that it calculates the score and multiply this hidden state with the softmax score. And this will amplify the hidden states with the high score. So one uh, limitation with this approach right, of using attention is that here still we do have a bit of uh, sequential, like we want to do a parallel processing of all the words because here uh, internally, although we are using attention, we do have RNNs or LSTM as our base uh, architecture and which processes the words sequentially. So we can uh, further leverage convolutional neural networks. Now, in convolutional neural networks, as you can see on the right side, uh, it shows that uh, the inputs, uh, the inputs that uh, gets processed, uh, we can have multiple inputs processed simultaneously. So, uh, with convolutional neural networks, we can uh, solve the problem of parallelization. And uh, why it can work in parallel is that each word on the input can be processed at the same time. And it does not necessarily depend on uh, the previous words that needs to be translated. And uh, the distance between the output word and any input for a CNN is of the order of log n. 
like the distance from the output and the input. We don't have to uh, follow the all the order of n, where n is the number of words in the sentence. But uh, there is one problem with uh, CNN networks as well. It does not uh, necessarily help with the problem of figuring out the uh, dependencies between words. So with uh, attention, uh, with RNN plus attention helps us in uh, focusing in solving the problem of dependencies, but the parallelization problem is not resolved. And with CNN, the parallelization problem is resolved, but the problem of dependencies still persists. So we need some kind of architecture which uh, combines both these uh, approaches and uh, uh, gives us the best of both worlds. So there comes transformer. So to solve the problem of this parallelization, it tries to solve, uh, it uh, uses the idea behind the convolutional neural network and uh, to understand the dependencies, it uses the attention models. And attention boosts the speed of how fast the model can translate from one sequence to another. So essentially transformers can perform almost any NLP task. It can be used for language modeling, translation, or classification as required. And it does it fast by removing the sequential nature of the problem. That's the main idea behind the speed of the transformer models. So transformer in a machine translation application would convert one language to another, or for a classification problem, will provide the class probabilities using an appropriate output layer. Now, all of this uh, different uh, variations of uh, use cases uh, depends on the final output layers for the network. But the underlying transformer basic structure will remain quite the same, the encoder and the decoder part. And uh, depending on our use cases, we can either use just the encoder part or the decoder part, or we can use both of these. So here is the original diagram of the transformer architecture. Uh, it seems a bit of intimidating at the first, but we will cover each and every component of this architecture. Now, uh, the left part that we see here in this diagram is the encoder represents the encoder part of the transformer, and the right part represents the decoder part of the transformer. Now, there are some models like BERT. It uses just the encoder part of the transformer because uh, uh, the main idea behind it is to generate the embeddings. And uh, for generative models like uh, GPT or GPT-3, they all use the decoder part of the transformer, where the idea is to generate text. So the encoder part may not be needed. Now, uh, transformer is essentially composed of a stack of encoder and decoder layers. So on the right side, you see a four layer transformer. So you see each and every layer represents uh, one layer of encoder. And on the decoder side, we have one layer of the decoder. So uh, if we, the role of an encoder layer is to encode the English sentence into numerical form using the attention mechanism. And the decoder aims to use the encoded information from the encoder layer to give our target language translation, whether it's uh, Hindi or uh, Spanish or German, whatever. So we will first go through the encoder part of the transformer. So the encoded part, uh, majorly it is what we see on the right side. Uh, the encoder, uh, the two main components of the encoder are a multi-head self-attention layer and a position-wise fully connected uh, feed-forward la layer. This layer expects its input to be uh, in the shape of S cross D, where D is the embedding di dimension that we want to maintain. It can be any number for uh, in the uh, architecture that they have defined in the paper, uh, attention is all you need. They have mentioned the dimension to be five and two. And here S is four because uh, based on the small example that we have the quick round box, we have four words. So it will be, the dimension will be four cross five and two. Now, uh, S can be of uh, maximum length of sentence in a batch. So S can keep on changing. That should not be an issue. Now, what about the output of this layer? So the encoder layers are stacked on top of each other. So we want to be able to have an output of the same dimension as the input so that the output can flow easily to the next encoder. So the output is also of the shape S cross T. Now, 
uh, this was majorly in terms of the dimensions and uh, major components. Now let's dive deep into the self-attention layer. But uh, before that, uh, let's quickly refresh what is attention and uh, what exactly happens in the attention mechanism. So uh, before thinking of attention, just uh, see in Python, we have a data structure called dictionary. It uh, stores the data in the form of key value pair. The, we, and whenever we want to search for a particular word, we, uh, we find the key and it will give us the value if the key is present in the dictionary. If it's not present, then it will give us, it, it, it returns none or it doesn't return anything. Now think of this dictionary as a, a fuzzy dictionary where instead of, if the key is not present, then instead of not returning anything, it will give you something relevant. Like uh, if you are having a dictionary of um, fruits and vegetables, and if you pass the, uh, and if you search for um, apple, and let's say apple is not present in the dictionary, then it would return something similar, not uh, like the type, whether it's a fruit or a dictionary, a uh, fruit or a vegetable. So this is the idea behind attention here also, that we have a query sequence. This is the sequence that is being processed right now. And we have a key value pair or a context sequence. This is the sequence that we will attend to. So uh, this is on the, uh, the basic idea of attention. And on the right side, you see how we calculate, how the weights and everything are, is, gets calculated in case of attention. So the, uh, the very first step here is uh, we see that there are a few, uh, uh, the few vectors that you see here, Q, K, and V. So in calculating self-attention, we need to create three vectors from each of the encoder's input. So for each word, we create a query vector, a key vector, and a value vector. The, uh, these vectors are created by multiplying the embedding by three matrices that we train during the training process. And uh, these uh, weight matrices get trained during uh, the training process during the, in the attention layer. Now, these new vectors are smaller in dimension than the embedding vector. Their dimensionality is uh, 64, while the embedding and the encoder uh, input output vectors have dimensionality of 512, which we just saw earlier. They don't have to be smaller. This is an architecture choice to make the computation of multi-head attention constant. We can choose any number. So when we multiply the uh, input vector x1 with uh, the weight matrix wq, it produces q1, the query vector, which is associated with that word. We end up creating a query, a key and value projection of each of the words in the input sentence. Now, what are the query key and value vectors. They are just abstractions that are useful for calculating and thinking about attention. The second step in this calculation is to calculate the score. Now, to, uh, we are calculating the self-attention for the first word of the example, the, um, the brown or the quick. Then uh, we need to score each, uh, sc we need to score each word of the input sentence against the specific word. This, this code determines how much focus to place on other parts of the input sentence as we encode a word at a certain position. The, the score is calculated by taking a dot product of the query vector with the key vector of the respective word we are scoring. So if we are processing the attention, self-attention for the word quick, the first score would be the dot product between Q2 and K2. And uh, similarly, it will be, the second dot product will be uh, multiplication between Q2 and K3. And we will get this uh, score matrix. And uh, the third and fourth step would be, we first divide this uh, uh, score with uh, the square root of the dimension. In this case, since we have taken 64 as our dimension, so we will divide it by eight, which will lead to more stable gradients. That's the only reason we are dividing it by the square root. And uh, at the end, we add up all these uh, scores. To, we, uh, we use uh, softmax to uh, generate the probabilities, which will add up all the scores to one. So in the uh, diagram or the, in the example below, we see the uh, softmax or the softmax probabilities for each of these words. And uh, when we, if we focus on the word quick, we see that there is some probability with the word fox. So this indicates that 
quick and fox, these two words are in a way relevant when we talk about the specific sentence. Similarly, for the word brown, there is some probability for the word fox. So this suggests that there is some dependency between the word brown and, and the word fox. So this is how the attention helps us in generating the context behind uh, between all the words that are present in the sentence. Now, uh, in case of a transformer, we have multi-head attention. So it's uh, it's nothing but the, so the, uh, the underlying architecture or the logic is same as what we have in case of self-attention. It's just that in case of multi-head attention, we have multiple self-attention layers in parallel. There are a few other details that uh, are mentioned in this diagram like uh, how when we how, when we stack up these multiple self attention self attention layers how each of those those looks and uh, what should be the dimension at each and every step and, uh, going forward the next component that we have in the architecture is the feed forward network now once we understand the multi headed attention layer the feed forward network understanding is pretty easy. Like uh, here, we don't have that many complications of all those calculations and everything. It is uh, just a simple uh, linear layer with uh, dropout layers and uh, it generates the output for each of these layers. Again, here there will be uh, a matrix multiplication internally in the network, but on a higher level, this is how the feed forward network looks like. And because this feed forward uh, network is applied to each and every uh, word of the sentence, like at each and every position, we call it pointwise uh, feed forward network. It also shares the weight so that the length of the source in the sentence doesn't matter. Now, uh, other uh, two major uh, points that we see in the uh, encoder or the decoder or the overall transformer architecture is the embedding and the position encoding layer. Now, position encoding is needed because the model does not contain any recurrence or convolution. So in order for the model to make use of the order of the sequence, it must inject some information about the relative or the absolute position and the sequence. And uh, to do this, we add positional encodings to the input embeddings at the bottom. We see for both encoder and the decoder part. And uh, in the paper, the authors have mentioned uh, they use the sine and cosine functions to create these the positional embeddings for different positions. Um, this uh, particular uh, uh, equations would generate a 2D matrix which will add to the embedding vector. And uh, that again, it will go to the first step of the encoders uh, encoder layer. And uh, next we have this add and not. So uh, this is, uh, this is actually, uh, this adds a skip level residual connections. So the exit encoder architecture in the paper will look something like uh, the below diagram that we see. Uh, we, it just travels in uh, information to, to a much greater length. So that uh, here, uh, if you want to put an analogy of like in your organization uh, in, for some information sharing and all, um, uh, for some information sharing and all, uh, you you have access to your manager and you have access to your manager's manager also. So uh, that is what we see here in this diagram, like the add and norm layer, it has information of, about you know, the output of the multi-head self-attention as well as the uh, output of from the previous encoder. This was about the encoder part of the transformer. Now we can move to the decoder part. The decoder part is uh, very much uh, similar as to what we have in the encoder part. Like most of the components are similar. For example, the feed forward, the add and non, and uh, the multi-head attention, but uh, there are a uh, bit minor changes. Like uh, in case of decoder, the multi-head attention, uh, the input to multi-head attention is also the output of the encoder. In case of encoder, it was just those embeddings that gets generated 
but in case of decoder for every, uh, each and every multi head attention layer uh, gets input from the output of the encoder stick and uh, we do have a uh, uh, masked multi head attention in case of encoder it was a simple multi head attention but in case of decoder we add an additional logic of masking this is needed because while training we do have information about the uh, subsequent words but uh, during inference we may not have we will definitely not have the subsequent words because that's what we want to predict so we will go to the masked multi head attention now in the case of masked multi head attention we will mask our out, uh, shifted output in a way that the network is never able to see the subsequent words since otherwise it can easily copy the word during training and uh, the model would perform, uh, would perform very well so in case of masked attention we add the resultant matrix before the softmax so earlier our softmax function was like what we see on the left side without any mask matrix but in case of masked multi head attention we add this additional masking matrix so here i have a small example for the seconds the quick brown fox assume this is the initial uh, matrix uh, softmax matrix that gets generated here we haven't applied the softmax function now, that's why you see these numbers are higher in two three digits now we uh, to this matrix we add the mask mask matrix which is like uh, uh, t cross t or 6 by 6 in this case because we have six words and when we add this you see that for the word quick only the quick is available the reference to the words like brown and fox have been masked out and when we apply the softmax to on top of this output of masked uh, or addition of this uh, pre original matrix with masked matrix we get uh, the original softmax probability so this is what happens when we use masked multi head attention Um, and uh, finally we have the output head so in the final in the previous diagram the overall diagram of the transformer architecture at the top you see after the decoder layer add and not the or the latest add and not we have a linear and softmax layer so this uh, this is the final output head this is me Yes, I think there might be some issues at the speaker side. Please wait for a while. I think let's wait for her to join again. Hello, ma'am, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, your yeah. connection was not stable, so yeah, please continue. Yeah. So I think yeah, that's all we were talking about the conclude. We were just concluding this session. Like uh, we covered the applications of the transformer, then the transformer and its significance in machine learning. Then we covered the attention, self attention, and multi head attention. We also covered the positional encoding with embeddings and uh, the original encoder decoder architecture and masking in self attention. So this was all about the transformer, and now we can open for Q and A session. Guys, before we proceed to answer your question, I would like I, I would like to request the attendees to please fill in the poll about feedback because as it helps us to conduct more sessions. Yes, guys.
Mom, you are free to take the question as per your wishes. Sure. Yeah. Um, does every encoder decoder uses attention or some might use LSTM as base architecture for encoder and decoder? Uh, yes, uh, this depends on the architecture that we are using. If we are, uh, it's not mandatory to use attention for every encoder decoder uh, model. We can uh, have a simple RNN and LSTM based encoder decoder as well. Uh, depending on our use case, if uh, we are having long sentences uh, in, uh, in our use case and uh, in our data set, then we, we can include the attention mechanism. Otherwise, a simple encoder decoder based on LSTM or RSTM should uh, work fine. And we have encoder decoder architecture is the same as auto encoder, or is there any difference between them? Um, you can think of auto encoder as a, a special case of encoder decoder where uh, the encoder compresses the input and the decoder attempts to recreate the input from the compressed version provided by the uh, encoder. So autoencoder can be thought of as a special case of encoder decoder architecture. What generated for all cells in the matrix? Feed forward neural network and transformer architecture. The feed forward neural network is needed so that we can, uh, uh, the attention will only calculate the scores. So feed forward neural network is needed to, uh, to understand more features from the underlying data set. Like if we are, uh, if we are using a uh, vision transformer or if we are working on a computer vision use case or a complex NLP problems, then uh, instead of just focusing only on the dependencies, we definitely want to extract underlying features. Uh, so we include the feed forward neural network to extract uh, other features from the network, from the data. Can we get link to the paper? Sure, I'll share the link for the paper. Attention is all you need is the paper, which defines this transformer architecture. In uh, positional embedding, the two equations are written in form of sine and cos. Are uh, those computed in average? So uh, sine and cos, they, they calculate both the sine and cos and uh, it actually, uh, one second, let me share a link for this. So, it first calculates the uh, it calculates both sine and cos and then uh, it uh, it adds a concatenation layer in our network and then it combines the output of both sine and cos so it uh, actually does not take the average but it combines both of them do all transformer architecture contains both encoder and decoder components um, not necessarily like uh, the bot model uses only the encoder part of the transformer then uh, the GPT models or other generative models uses majorly uses the decoder part of the, the transformer. What we covered here, the encoder decoder is majorly focused on use cases like uh, machine translation where both encoder and decoder are needed. So it's not compulsory mandatory to use both encoder and decoder. Depends on the use case, we can select one of those. Can transformer be used for topic modeling tasks like document summarization? And yes, we can use transformer for document summarization. There's actually a, a transformer model called T5, which uh, uh, which is used in this uh, in such use cases of document summarization. So T5 transformer it uh, actually provide it's, it it actually supports multiple use cases like uh, uh, translation, sense summarization, classification. Uh, we can refer to the 
Hugging Face library. It provides the implementation of the different transformer models. And there you would be able to see the implementation for this DeFi transformer, where based on your use case, you have to select a specific parameter. It's a hyperparameter that you have to set. And accordingly, you can use it for document summarization as well. Can you please explain MLM again? Yeah. Um, I'll explain MLM in the uh, next few minutes. I'll take a few more questions and then I'll uh, reshare the screen and explain MLM again. Uh, how multi head attention improve the performance in comparison to the single head attention? So, in case of single head attention, uh, we focus on uh, the sentence is passed only once. Now, in case of multi head attention, what happens? There are uh, the same sentence will be uh, processed multiple times. So, in the first pass, let's say uh, the sentence, the sentence or the attention mechanism gave importance to one or two words, second or fourth word, for example. Then, uh, in the second pass, in the when we use a second attention, it may give importance to the third and the fifth word. So, that way, if when we use multi head attention, we get imp uh, importance of all the words. In different scenarios or in different contexts. And at the end, we combine the output of all these different multi head attentions and uh, generate the final uh, output in the required dimension. So, in, in case of to summarize this, in case of multi head attention, the same sentence uh, undergoes multiple uh, training and uh, different contexts. And the idea here is to generate or to identify different contexts from the same sentence. What the parallelism and dependencies mean in case of sequence to sequence task. So um, in case of sequence to sequence, like uh, the machine translation is an example of sequence to sequence where we want to uh, translate a sequence of words in one language to a sequence of words into another language. So in case of when we, uh, uh, when we have a sequence in uh, uh, mo most of the cases, we need to have, the, there will be some dependencies between words. Like uh, uh, the boy is running and the boy is playing. He is playing with ball. So in the second sentence, he has some dependencies. Like this, he is talking about the boy or the name of the boy, whatever it is. So this type of dependencies are present in sequence to sequence. And when we translate uh, such sentences, we need to have information about uh, this dependencies. And uh, parallelism is nothing but. Uh, uh, processing multiple words simultaneously. So it is uh, just to speed up the training process. And uh, in sequence to sequence task, like if we are able to process multiple words simultaneously, then the training time would reduce as compared to processing the words step by step or one after the other. Can, uh, sure, I will uh, share some uh, references for, uh, to deep dive in this topic. Or, or to uh, cover multiple different components of transform architecture. Uh, probabilities uh, would be generated for all the output, depending on the uh, how we have defined the output layer, like in case of classification, if we are using the transformer architecture for classification use case, and let's say it's a binary classification, then it will generate probabilities for all the input sentences, binary probabilities, like uh, uh, for two cases. And if it's a multi-class classification, it will have those probabilities. And again, if it's a translation problem, then uh, probabilities will be generated for each all those words. So probabilities will be generated for all the cells. Can I use only encoded part of T5 that is encoder decoder model? Um, if I actually has uh, both encoder decoder because it supports multiple use cases, but if you just want to use the encoder part, you can uh, use the BERT model, or else if you want to uh, develop the uh, transformer, the encoder part of the transformer from scratch, then in TensorFlow, uh, there is a tutorial on uh, 
uh, machine neural language translation so you can refer to that and just follow the encoded part of it Five important changes in every pass of multi-head attention because uh, here uh, um, in case of attention you you would have seen that there are three weight metric matrices that gets generated uh, for e each of the three vectors query uh, key and value so these weights are randomly assigned and these weights are learned during the training phase so there are possibilities that uh, in every every phase of training the weights would change and because of this because the weights changes the entire uh, for subsequent calculations like multiplying with the key vector and then generating the softmax and all uh, all these will also change and because of this in every pass of multi head attention we would have different importance like the same word would have different importance in different uh, multi head in different attention so because the weights are not uh, uh, assigned, uh, assigned initially and they are learned during the training process uh, it gets it changes Let me share my screen. We will go through the mask language modeling again, the masking part of the decoder. Um, let me know once you can see the screen. Yes, on your screen is visible. Yes. So, just a quick recap of uh, self attention. So, on the right side, we see the calculation. So, like I mentioned, in case of attention, we have three vectors key, query, and value, and uh, the corresponding weight matrices, which uh, gets learned during the training process. So, uh, in the first step, we multiply the, each of these uh, vectors with the respective weight matrices, and then we calculate the softmax of it. And uh, we divide this uh, we divide this softmax with the square root of the dimensional vector that we have. In, case, in this case, we are going with 64. So this is the basic uh, self attention part. Now, in case of masking, we uh, most the previous all part will remain same. It's just that in the soft well, in the softmax calculation layer, we add a mask matrix. So mask matrix will be like this. Uh, it can be it a mask matrix would be an identity matrix uh, like and in this case because we don't want to focus on the subsequent words like when we are focusing on the word quick. The, in the decoder part, we don't want to focus on the words brown and fox. That's why we need to mask the words brown and fox. And, that, and that's the reason in the mask matrix, you see the for those words, the values would be infinity or very high. Basically, we want to eliminate those words. So when we uh, combine these two matrices, the first and the mask, ma mask matrix, we get something like what we see on the uh, top right. Now, once this matrix is generated, then we add the softmax to this. Now, so when we apply the softmax function to this matrix, the remaining all the probabilities, like uh, in case of the word quick, the probabilities for the word brown and fox will be set to zero because uh, initially uh, they are all minus infinity. So it doesn't make sense to use uh, to give any probability to those words. And uh, for all of the previous words, again, there would be some probabilities, like in case of the word quick, corresponding to the word the, there will be some probabilities like uh, 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 or something, depending on the re relevance. And when we process the word brown, there will be some value for the uh, words the and quick. So, this was mask multi head attention. So, I think every question has been answered. So, uh, 
Thanks a lot, Priya, on behalf of Analytics, Analytics Vidya. I would like to thank you for your time and for delivering such a wonderful session. I'm sure our audience found it insightful, and hopefully we can conduct more such sessions with you in future. The LinkedIn profile of the speaker shall be found in the chat section. And I hope you guys have filled the feedback poll. If not, I request you to please fill the uh, poll because it helps us to conduct more such sessions. Now, guys, if you wish to conduct a seminar or facing difficulty in registering, con registering, please connect with us at editor at analyticswithy.com. And I think with this, our session is over. I hope you have a great day. Um, let's end this. Bye -bye, Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.